Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be finding the inverse of a function. We have f of x equals x divided by e to the power x, and we're going to be finding an expression for the inverse function f inverse of x. So basically what f inverse does is just reverses the process. Think of a function that maps an x value to a y value. So this is, if this is f, then f inverse will take the y and map it to x, map it back to x, okay? That's what it does. Of course, not every function is invertible. You have to have a bijection. It has to be one to one and onto, so on and so forth. Because if you have, let's say, two inputs that give you the same output, then it can't be invertible because in the inverse case, we're gonna, we're gonna have an issue, okay? So, how do you find the inverse of a function like this? You probably know how to find the inverse of x, which is the same thing because that's the identity. And e to the power x is another one which is interesting that comes up a lot and its inverse is the ln function, right? The natural logarithm. But what about when you combine these two? Interesting things happen. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in general, when you're given a function, let's start with a simple example. Let's say uh, you were asked to find the inverse of f of x equals 3x plus 1, which is, by the way, super easy. There's a formula that you can use in general. But what you do is replace the f of x with y, and then your goal is going to be to solve for x. So that's why, in most cases, I'd like to write the expression with x on the left-hand side, and then our goal is going to be, again, solving for x. Because remember, you have y equals something, and then you want to get turn it into x equals something what kind of process will reverse the uh, mapping, okay? So, to solve for x in this case, we have to take two steps. One, we subtract one from both sides, and then divide by three, and that does the work. And that gives us x equals y minus one divided by three. Great, but is that the answer? Well, kind of. If you think of a value like, let's say, five will be mapped to 16 in this case, because it's three times x plus one. And then in the f inverse case, you'll take the 16 minus one, 15 divided by three, you'll get the five. So that's the reverse uh, reversing process. But most of the time, and in this problem too, we're being asked to find f inverse in terms of x, not in terms of y. So this gives us f inverse of y, because here's how the rule works. If f of x is y, then this just means f inverse of y equals x, okay? Of course, if both of these are invertible, then you can kind of, you can put uh, if and only if, okay? Great, so that's how we can find it, but since we want the answer in terms of x, what do we do? We basically have an expression now, forget about the x because that'll confuse you. So just write it as follows. Now focus on this, this is in terms of y, and since y is a dummy variable, just like x, we can replace y with x, but again, that's not the same x it's a different x, okay? It's on the other side of the equation. So now you can express f inverse as x minus one divided by three. Make sense? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do, but our process is gonna be a little different because we have a complicated function, somewhat complicated, and we've done similar problems be before. Go ahead and check them out. That should give you an idea. I believe I've done e to the power x divided by x before, before, which is the reciprocal of f of x in this case. But does that mean the inverse of the reciprocal is the reciprocal of the inverse? That's actually a good question. The inverse of the reciprocal is the reciprocal of the inverse, something like this. Does this rule hold for any function? Probably it does, and that's for you to find out. Anyways, so let's see how we can apply the same process. Yes, it is more complicated because we're gonna be using a special method, okay? So, step one, replace f of x with y. So I'm gonna show you step by step what you're supposed to do, okay? Step two, switch sides so that you can have the x terms on the left. It's kind of more natural for most people, or for some people at least, for people who read math from left to right. I don't know if anyone else reads it from right to left. I know some people write from right to left, and some people even write upside down, right? Or up and down, sorry. Uh, but does that mean they do math the same way? Probably not. Uh, I think math is kind of universal and we do usually do it from left to right. Correct me if I'm wrong. So that's the first step. And then the second step, the third step is going to be to solve for X, but to solve for X, you're going to, this is the critical part because when you're given an equation like this, how do you solve for X? And unfortunately, this is a transcendental equation, which means it's not standard. 
and you can't really solve this by standard methods. So you have to use a special method, which is called Lambert's W function. In case you're not familiar with that, I'm gonna show you real quick. Lambert's W function is denoted by W, usually an uppercase, and Wolfram Alpha interprets this as product log, just one word, and put the argument inside the parentheses and you're done. Obviously, there are multiple branches. Look up um, Lambert's W function on Wikipedia and other places. You're gonna find some information. Make sure you read up on this function. Because I'm about to give you a very basic definition. So Wolfram Alpha, uh, will tell you the same thing if you use the product log, but W of T to the T is just T. So basically, we're trying to invert, we have a function F of T equals T to the T, and its inverse basically is gonna take T to the T and return T, and we call this F inverse function W. Make sense? Obviously, we don't have an explicit way to express it. Like E to the X, its inverse is ln X, but we can't do it. But it's called product log because it's the product of x and e to the x. So it's kind of like a log, but it's the product log, okay? So let's go ahead and see how we can use it. So you do need, to keep a long story short, you need something like this. But do we have that? We have x, but we don't have e to the x. We have e to the x, but it's in the denominator. So how do you fix that? First of all, you should just bring it up. So write this as x times e to the power negative x. And how do you know it's the right approach? Most of the time, you leave the x alone because if you write it as 1 over x, that's going to be very problematic. So, and if you practice this a lot, you're going to get the hang of it. But in this case, we want t e to the t. So this, is, this should be our t, but we don't have that t here because t is e to the power of negative x. So what should we have instead of x? We should have negative x. So... How do we do that? Easy, multiply both sides by negative one or just insert the minus sign because that's a product, you can do that very easily. Get Make sense? Now we have t e to the t because negative x is our t and if you w both sides, now you kind of get need to get used to this, you don't have to uh, substitute every time, but you're gonna apply Lambert's w on both sides and that should give you on the left-hand side negative x, because remember, when you have a product like this, product log gives you the t, right? And in this case, t or coffee, whatever you want to call it, in this case, our t is negative x, so this output here is just going to be negative x. Great, so we're getting closer to the answer. Why? Because we were able to kind of solve this, and remember, our goal was to solve for x, right? That's one of the steps. And we're almost there. All you have to do is now multiply both sides by negative one so that you can get the x by itself. That should be the goal, not the ultimate goal, because obviously we wanna write this in terms of x, remember that. So what do you do next? You replace x with f inverse of y because that's what it is, and just forget about the past. If you forget about it, trust me, it's gonna be a lot easier. So let's scroll up a little bit and make this thing disappear. Hopefully it did. I don't know. I can't see it because after I edit and trim it a little bit, I think that part will be gone, hopefully. Now, what do you do in this case? Well, since you're looking for f inverse of x, your goal should be to replace y with x on both sides. And again, don't worry about this x because it's not the same one because those are just dummy variables, disposable. You just use them and then throw them away, okay? So now this should give us the answer. So what is if f of x is x over e to the x, its inverse should be negative w of negative x. Double negation does not give you a positive in this case because you have the w, this w, this minus sign cannot act inside the w because w is super complicated. And we don't have an expression, unfortunately. It's just called w. And this brings us Till the end of this video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care. Don't forget to check out A plus BI because that's a channel dedicated to complex numbers. And bye-bye.